Here's the third lesson of the discrete functions unit. In this lesson, we're going to take the formulas that you've learned about arithmetic and geometric sequences and apply them to solve some more complicated questions. Let's start off by answering a couple questions that'll be a nice review before we get into the lesson. What is the difference between a sequence and a series? Well, a sequence is an ordered list of numbers identified by a pattern. And a series is just the sum of the values in a sequence. And so far in this unit, we've looked at two different types of sequences, an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence. But what's the difference between the two of them? In an arithmetic sequence is a sequence where there is a constant difference between consecutive terms. And a geometric sequence is a sequence that has a constant ratio between consecutive terms. And this just means for an arithmetic sequence, there is some number that you can add or subtract to get from one term to the next, but for a geometric sequence, there is some number that you multiply by to get from one number to the next. And let's review the two formulas for the general terms of both an arithmetic and geometric sequence. For an arithmetic sequence, to find the value of any one term, let's say term n, you take the first term, term a, and add the common difference n minus 1 times. And for a geometric sequence, to find the value of any one term in the sequence, you take the first term, term a, and multiply by the common ratio, r, n minus 1 times. And just so you remember, off to the side, I'll remind you what each of these parameters, term n, a, n, d, and r, what they all stand for. tn is just the value of any one term in the sequence, whereas an n just represents the term number meaning not its actual value, but what is its position in the list of numbers in the sequence? Is it the first term, the second term, so on? A stands for the first term in the sequence, and D is for the constant difference, and that applies only if it's an arithmetic sequence, and R stands for the constant ratio, and that only applies if we have a geometric sequence. And now let's try a bunch of problems that involve using these formulas for arithmetic and geometric sequences. Starting with example one. I'll zoom in so you can see it a bit better. It gives us the first three terms of a sequence, and it says determine whether the sequence is arithmetic or geometric. So is there a constant difference or a constant ratio between consecutive values? Well, if I found the ratio between the first pair of values by dividing the second term by the first term, I would get 2 fifths, meaning to get from the first to the second, I would have to multiply by 2 fifths. But then finding the ratio between the next pair by doing 2 divided by negative 4, I get negative a half, meaning to get from negative 4 to 2, I would have to multiply by negative a half. Notice these ratios are different, so this is not a geometric sequence. Instead, let's check if there's a constant difference. In the first pair of numbers, if I do the second one minus the first one, negative 4 minus negative 10, I get 6. That would mean to get from negative 10 to negative 4, I would have to add 6. And then the next pair, if we do the second number in the pair minus the first number in the pair, 2 minus negative 4 is 6 again, meaning if I add 6, I can get from negative 4 to 2. So since there is a constant difference, I know this is an arithmetic sequence. And because it's an arithmetic sequence, I know the formula for the general term of the sequence would follow this format. And for this formula to show the relationship between the value of a term and its term number, I would just have to sub in for a and d. A stands for the value of the first term in the sequence, which I can see is negative 10, plus n minus 1 times the constant difference. And I calculated the constant difference to be 6. So here is my formula for the general term of this sequence we're working with. Whichever term number I wanted, I would just sub in that value of n, and then this would calculate the value of that term for me. So for part C, it says use that formula to find the value of term 21. So I just have to, into this formula, replace n with 21. And then evaluating this using the correct order of operations, 21 minus 1 is 20. 20 times 6 is 120, so negative 10 plus 120 is 110. Which just means, in the original sequence, if I were to list out the first 21 terms, so if I were to keep the pattern going of keeping on adding 6 to get the next term, the 21st term would be 110. And now let's keep going on, let's do example two. It says to insert two numbers between eight and 32, so the four numbers form an arithmetic sequence. So let me create some blanks here. So it says we start with eight, 
and then there are two unknown numbers, and then 32. And we know that it has to form an arithmetic sequence, meaning there has to be a constant difference between these values. So to get from 8 to the second number, I have to add some d value, and then that d value is going to be what I add to get to each sequential number. So if I could somehow figure out the value of d, I would be able to fill in those two missing numbers. Now using the formula for an arithmetic sequence, this formula here, I should be able to solve for what this common difference is. Let me rewrite the formula. Notice we have the first term of the sequence, so we have our a value, that's 8, and I know the value of the fourth term is 32. So I could say term 4 is equal to 8 plus 4 minus 1 times the common difference. And I know the value of term 4, it's 32. So I can replace term 4 with 32. And now notice I have an equation here where the only unknown is the constant difference. So I can solve for it. I'll subtract this 8 to the other side of the equation, giving me 24. And then 4 minus 1 is, of course, 3. And then dividing the 3 to the other side of the equation, I figure out the constant difference is 8. So I'll replace all these constant differences with 8 and then fill in my missing values. My first number, plus 8, is 16. And then 16 plus 8 is 24. And then 24 plus 8 is 32. Now I'm sure you could have figured out those numbers without having to use this formula, but it's a good way to show you algebraically how we could come up with these missing answers. And now looking at example three, it says we have an arithmetic sequence, which is right here. And then it asks us to find which term has a value of 92 and to prove it mathematically. Well, the question tells me that this sequence of numbers here is arithmetic, meaning there's a constant difference between consecutive terms. If I look at the first pair of numbers, finding the difference, 14 minus eight is six. So to get from the first term to the second term, I would add six. And that pattern holds true for each pair of numbers. Just keep adding six and you get the next number in the sequence. I suppose we could just keep on adding six and continue the sequence until we got to a value of 92 and then count what term number that was. But the question says to prove it mathematically. So what I mean by that, without having to write all the numbers in the sequence up to 92. So if I use my formula for the general term of an arithmetic sequence, I know a, my first term is eight, so I can replace a with eight. And I know my constant difference, d, is six. So I'll replace it with six. And now the question wants me to figure out what term number has a value of 92. So I can replace the value of the term, tn, with 92, and then solve for n. To solve for n, I'll start by subtracting the eight to the other side, giving me 84. And then next, I'll divide the six to the other side, continuing over here. I can see that I have 84 over six, which is 14, equal to n minus one. And then solving for n by adding this one to the other side, I see that n equals 15, which means in this sequence of numbers, it would be the 15th term that would have a value of 92. Well, let's move on to example four. In this example, it doesn't tell us if this sequence of numbers is arithmetic or geometric. Instead, it asks us to figure that out. Is it arithmetic or geometric? So is there a constant difference or a constant ratio between consecutive terms? Well, the difference between the first two terms, I would have to subtract 300 to get from 200 to negative 100. But then to get from negative 100 to 50, I would have to add 150. So there is not a constant difference. So this is not an arithmetic sequence. But let's check the ratios between pairs of terms. Between the first pair of terms, Negative 100 divided by 200 is negative a half. So multiplying by negative 1 half gets from the first term to the second term. But then from the second to the third term, is that ratio negative a half as well? Yes, 50 divided by negative 100 is also negative a half. So multiplying negative 100 by negative a half does get me the third term, 50. So there's a constant ratio, which means the sequence is a geometric sequence. And part B wants us to find an equation that represents the sequence. Well, the format of the equation for the general term of a geometric sequence looks like this, where the first term a gets multiplied by the common ratio r n minus one times, and that gives you the value of the term in the sequence. So for this equation to give the relationship between the value of the term and the term number, I would have to sub in for a and for r. a is just the first term of the sequence, which is 200, and r is the common ratio, which is negative one half. So I'll replace those variables. And then in part C, we want to use that formula to find the value of the 14th term. So in the equation, 
I'll replace n with 14. 14 minus 1 is 13. And then to simplify this power, I would apply the exponent of 13 to both the numerator and denominator. So I'll do negative 1 to the power of 13, which is still negative 1. And then 2 to the power of 13 is 8,192. And then I can reduce this fraction. 8 divides evenly into both 200 and 8,192. It goes into 200 25 times. And it goes into 8,192 1,024 times leaving me with my final answer of the 14th term being negative 25 over 1,024. And now let's move on to example five where it says complete the geometric sequence. Well, if this is a geometric sequence, I know there's a constant ratio between terms. Whatever the first term is, when I multiply it by the constant ratio, r, I'll get 160. And then that 160 will be multiplied by r and so on. So I could use my formula for the general term of a geometric sequence make an equation for both of these terms, and then solve for both my a value and for the common ratio. But I think we could do this a bit simpler just with some logic. I see this 160 is going to be multiplied by the constant ratio, one, two, three, four times, and then it should make it equal to 10. So I'll write that as an equation. 160 is going to be multiplied by the constant ratio, four times, and then it should make it equal to 10. And now I can just solve this equation. I'll divide the 160 to the other side, giving me r to the power of four equals 10 over 160, which reduces to one over 16. And then to isolate this r, I can just raise both sides of this equation to the power of one over four, giving me r equals, now a power of one over four just means four factors of what multiplied together equals one over 16. Well, four factors of one equal one, and four factors of two multiplied together equal 16. So that means r equals one over two, which is a half. So let me replace all of my r values with a half. Multiplying 160 by a half gives me 80. 80 times a half gives me 40, and then 20, and then 10, like it's supposed to. So what comes before 160? Well, what do I multiply by one half to get 160? Well, I can just double 160 to figure that out, and that would be 300. And 20. Now let's go ahead and look at example 6. Example 6 says the 50th term of an arithmetic sequence is 238 and the 93rd term is 539. So it tells us about two terms in this arithmetic sequence. It tells us that the sequence is arithmetic. That's important. Find a general equation to represent this sequence. So my end goal is to be able to write the general equation of any term in the arithmetic sequence, so tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d. For this specific sequence, I would have to figure out the value of a and d to write that equation. Well, when we're missing two unknowns, usually what you do is you write two equations that involve those two unknowns, and then you can use substitution or elimination to solve for your unknown variables. So that's what we'll do. Notice I highlighted some information in blue and other information in green. That's because we're going to be able to make separate equations with those sets of information. With the blue information, I see that the 50th term is 238. So using this equation for the general term, subbing in the information that's in blue, I could say that term 50 is equal to a plus 50 minus one times the constant difference. And we know the value of term 50, it says it's 238. So I'll replace term 50 with 238. So there we have, we have one equation with two unknowns. I don't know A, I don't know D. When there's two unknowns, we'll need another equation that involves those same two unknowns. Let me just move this out of the way a bit. Now let's make an equation for the 93rd term. I know that term 93 would equal A plus 93 minus one times D. And the value of the 93rd term is 539. So I'll replace term 93 with 539. There's my second equation that involves those same two variables of a and d. So now what I can do using these two equations is solve for those variables using either substitution or elimination. I think I'll go ahead and do elimination by rewriting these equations with their like terms lined up in columns. And since the coefficients of both of the terms that have an a, the coefficients are both the same, they're both one. If I subtract these two equations from each other, the variable a will eliminate. So let me subtract all of the like terms. 238 minus 539, I get negative 301. 
A minus A is zero, the A's eliminate. And then 49D minus 92D is negative 43D. And then dividing that negative 43 to the other side, 301 divided by 43 is seven. So the constant difference between the terms in the sequence is seven. So I'm now able to replace D with seven, but I don't know A yet. I'll have to sub this D value of seven back into either of my original equations and then solve for A. No matter which one we sub it into, we'll get the same answer because the equations are equal to each other when D equals seven. So I'll choose the one with smaller numbers. I'll sub it into equation one. So I'll replace this D in equation one with seven. 49 times seven is 343. And then I'll subtract that 343 to the other side, giving me an A value of negative 105, meaning the first term of the sequence is negative 105 and the constant difference is seven. So with those two pieces of information, I can write my final answer. To find the value of any term in this sequence, you take the first term, negative 105, and you add the constant difference, n minus one times. And you could test this out to make sure it works based on what the question gives us. The question tells us that the 50th term is 238. So you should be able to sub in 50 for n and make it equal 238. And also, we should be able to sub in 93 for n and get 539. And now let's go ahead and do the last question of this lesson. Number seven says determine the number of terms in this geometric sequence. Let me zoom in on it a bit. It tells us that it's geometric, so I know there's a constant ratio between terms, which means there's a number I can multiply by to get from one number to the next in the sequence. If you don't see that that number is negative two, what you could do in each pair of numbers, just do the second number divided by the first, and you'll see that it's negative two each time. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, negative 10 times negative 2 is 20, and that pattern will continue. These dots means there's a bunch of missing terms, and then it finishes at negative 10,240. But what term number is that? 5 is the first term, negative 10 is the second, 20 is the third, but what term number is negative 10,240? Well, since it's a geometric sequence, I know the value of any one term is equal to the A value times the constant ratio n minus one times. And I know the a value, it's five, so I can replace a with five. I know the constant ratio is negative two, so I can replace r with negative two. And I know the value of this last term. I know the value of the term is negative 10,240. So subbing in for all of those variables, the only thing left to solve for is n. Let me show you how we can do that. Let me sub in for the variables first. I'll start by dividing this five to the other side. Negative 10,240 divided by five is negative 2,048. And now we have this exponential equation to solve. When your variable is in the exponent, a strategy to solve would be to write both sides of the equation as powers with the same base. So I can rewrite this negative 2,048 as a power of negative two. And that works out nicely because 2048 is a power of two. Negative two to the power of 11 is negative 2,048. And now that both sides of the equation are powers with a base of negative two, the only way the equation would be true is if the exponents were also equal to each other. So we can now just set the exponents equal, 11 equals n minus one, and then adding the one to the other side, I figure out that n is 12, which means in this sequence of numbers, the 12th term is the last term in the sequence, negative 10,240. So there are 12 terms in this sequence. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Make sure you stay tuned for the next lesson where we'll do some more complicated questions involving arithmetic and geometric series. Jensen, man.